Mountains have always been the bane of military forces throughout history. The rugged terrain and the harsh conditions give even the most powerful militaries a challenge, slowing down their movement, providing a defending force with natural choke points that can bog down their offensive operations, and natural phenomena such as avalanches and strong winds and sudden snow and ice storms can be even more dangerous than enemy action. Due to the highly dangerous nature of these environments, soldiers with specialist training are needed to fight effectively. The oldest of these specialist mountain troops in the world belonged to the famous Alpini Brigades of Italy. The story of Alpini begins in 1872, with a report published by Captain Giuseppe Domenico Perruccetti, who proposed the creation of military forces who would be tasked with the defense of the Alpine region in the north of Italy, as a shield against the possible aggression from France, or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Italy had only been a united nation for 11 years at that point and the hastily assembled defensive plan of that era was to attempt to hold the much flatter Pio Valley further to the south in the event of foreign invasion. The more mountainous terrain to the north was deemed unsuitable for the task of military operations. Peruchetti's idea was to defend the Alps further north, recruiting units locally from the populace of the region. These men would have had some experience in the difficult conditions that they would face, and they were more adapted to the harsh conditions. It was also hoped that the men would be more loyal as well, given that they would be recruited and stationed in their home regions. Formation would be given the name Alpini, a reference to the Alps that they were tasked with defending. The first 15 Alpini companies were formed and activated on October 15, 1872. Though primarily a light infantry force, in 1877, the Alpini were supplemented with artillery battalions, something that had persisted through the years. There have also been the addition of engineer, medical, logistics, and other specialist battalions. Over the decades, the number of Alpini battalions has risen and fallen based on the geopolitical needs of the era. From the initial 15 companies of around 120 men each to six full Alpini divisions during World War II. Today, two brigades are still on active service after three were disbanded at the end of the Cold War. The Julia Brigade and the Toranese Brigade, consisting of six regiments as well as command units and attached specialist contingents like paratroopers and signal regiments. In spite of their intended purpose of defending Italy's northern frontier, the first trial by fire for the Alpini occurred in 1887 when a battalion was formed from volunteers drawn from other battalions. This 1st degree Battaglione Alpini de Africa, or 1st African Alpini Battalion, would be deployed to Eritrea in Africa, and they would participate also in the Boxer Rebellion in China and the Italo-Turkish War. It was during World War I, however, when the Alpini would face its greatest challenge, fighting a brutal three-year-long campaign against the Austrian and German forces, making up the majority of the fighting on the Italian front in what would become known as the War in Snow and Ice. The Alpini fought tooth and nail against other mountain combat specialists, the Austrian Kaiserjäger and the Standschützen, and later in the war the German Alpenkorps, distinguishing themselves in battle and earning their place in history. During this time, the combatants not only fought one another, but sub-zero temperatures, blistering snowstorms, avalanches, and rock slides, and the privations due to the logistical nightmare that is inherent in such hellish conditions. The realities of the combat led to the creation of specialized ski and mountain climbing companies who could move much more efficiently deep in the mountains. After years of a grinding stalemate, both sides resorted to tunnel warfare, carving tunnels into the solid rock of the Alp and the Dolomite Range, located in northeast Italy, hoping to give their soldiers some cover in the inhospitable conditions, huge bunkers and tunnels being drilled into the rock along with roads and rail lines and walkways in an attempt to ease conditions and simplify the logistics. In December of 1916, the Alpini would suffer their greatest loss of life. Although it was actually a Wednesday, on December 13th and what would later be known as White Friday, a series of avalanches would fall on both Italian and Austrian troops, caused by heavy snowfall, though there are some reports that both sides fired artillery on the mountain slopes to exacerbate the conditions. Estimates of the number killed ranged between two and 10,000 over the course of two days, representing the largest loss of life ever to avalanches in history. In spite of these casualties, both the Alpini and their Austrian counterparts would still be locked in a stalemate. The combatants then resorted to countermining, digging tunnels under the enemy's position, and then packing the tunnels with explosives and collapsing them. Still, the fighting would rage until 1918 with the end of hostilities. Overall, Italy would lose over half a million men in this conflict, with around 115,000 from Alpini units, and about a third from all Austrian casualties suffered during the war would be inflicted on this front. 
a significant portion of the hands of the Alpini. During World War II, the Alpini would fight primarily for the Axis powers on many fronts, including France, Yugoslavia, Greece, and particularly on the Eastern Front against the Soviet Union. There, Alpini divisions were utilized improperly, being tasked with combating Soviet armor and infantry on the Don Plain, not the rugged, mountainous terrain of the Caucasus, the light infantry units were trained and equipped for suffering catastrophic losses. Though primarily the Alpini would fight for the Axis powers, when Italy switched sides after dictator Benito Mussolini was deposed, many units fought on the Allied side as well, hoping to liberate the country from fascist control. During the Cold War, the Alpini would be reorganized several times, with their primary task being to defend Italy against potential invasion from the north in the event of Soviet aggression. And since then, the Alpini have participated in peacekeeping operations in Kosovo and in the War on Terror, their skills being put to use in the rugged terrain of Afghanistan, as well as many other battlefields of the modern era. In addition to their role as such a fighting force, they were also deployed as a search and rescue contingent, rescuing lost or stranded mountaineers in the Alps, or assisting in earthquake relief efforts, mostly in the Apennines, the central mountain range making up the spine of Italy, which is a region prone to geological instability. There are many symbols used by the Alpini that distinguish them from other units and the Italian military. The most distinctive is the Capello Alpino. Initially, the Alpini were issued black felt bowler hats, but after the Italian military updated its uniforms in 1910, the bowler was replaced with a gray-green felt hat that still exists to this day. The Capello consists of multiple parts which denote the regiment, rank, and specialty. The left side holds a feather, the majority of which are black raven feathers, which gives the Alpini their nickname La Pen Nere, the Black Feathers. Though a black or brown eagle feather is used for NCOs and junior officers, and a white goose feather for senior officers and generals. The front of the capello was the fregio, or coat of arms, which designates the regiment that the soldier belongs to. Black for enlisted, gold for officers. There's also the napina, a small oval piece of wood with an attached piece of wool each one color coordinated to each battalion within the regiment. Officers also have a rank insignia on the Capello as well. In the current era, the Alpini are still primarily a light infantry force and are equipped with the Italian-made Beretta ARX-160, a select fire assault rifle that can be configured to fire either the NATO standard 5.56 45mm cartridge or the 7.62 39mm round. For heavier firepower, they also make use of the FN Minimi, which can be chambered in either 5.56 or 7.62, a design that would later inspire the American M249 Saw or the M3, a German light machine gun based on the famous MG42, chambered in 7.62, by the way. Anti-vehicle capabilities come in the form of the German Panzerfaust III rocket-propelled grenade launcher, the French and German-made Milan II, and the American-made BGM-71 Toe, tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided anti-tank missiles. The Alpini used a wide variety of vehicles, including the Italian-made four-wheel drive Iveco LMV, which is the light multi-role vehicle, the Puma armored personnel carrier, variants of which can be made in 4x4 or 6x6, and the Swedish-developed Bandwagen BV206, an articulated tracked personnel carrier and troop transport, which is often used to assist in search and rescue operations. Two remaining Alpini brigades are for the most part stationed in the north of Italy, with the regiments of the Giulia Brigade primarily stationed in the eastern portion of the Italian Alps, while the western Alps are covered by the Taranese Brigade. Through the 9th Alpini, attached to the Taranese Brigade, is stationed much further south in central Italy, protecting and providing as rescue and relief efforts in the Apennines. As was the case in the past, many of the recruits of the Alpini come from the region in which they were stationed. However, soldiers are also recruited from other areas of Italy, including Sicily and Sardinia. Even after retirement, Alpini still maintain strong connections to their former units. The ANA, or the Associazione Nazionale Alpini, National Alpini Association in English, it's, a, it's an organization made up of former members of the Alpini units, and the collection which is commonly referred to as the 10th Alpini Regiment. In addition to the local events honoring the Vecchi, or Honored Ones, there's also a national reunion where veterans and their families can meet, trade stories, and reminisce about their experience in one of Italy's most legendary military formations. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please support the channel by hitting that like and that subscribe button. Your support genuinely means a lot to us. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.